Is if we're looking slightly tired and gleek it, as the Scots would say. You're looking a bit like it. <laughs> slightly jet lagged, but we are here. We've been at Metz this week in Amsterdam, which is freezing. It's not quite snowing. I know. I didn't know I owned so many like warm clothes. I have a pair of jeans. I still own one pair of jeans and a pair of jeans, a pair of trainers. We have been wearing those double thickness woolen gloves and hats. It's like two degrees Celsius outside. It's freezing. <laughs> it is kind of terrible, but inside it's fine and it's been quite fun. This show is massive. It is. It's like 13, 12, 13 halls of an exhibition centre all crammed with everything you can imagine for boats from sailboats to powerboats to foiling race boats it's all here everything you could ever imagine it's like a massive shopping mall for me it's so dangerous yeah there is also a super yacht hall but I don't think we're going to be allowed in there I don't think they let people like us in I think you have to put a cool mill at the door on the way through. <laughs> yeah, we don't have that. So. <laughs> so we spent most of our time on the I Now For You booth. They've been launching Zora 3.0 this week. So if you saw our video a couple of weeks ago, you'll have seen like the rough introductory tour, um, but there were loads of questions, particularly about hardware and stuff like that. So we thought while we're here, before the show is actually open today, while it's a little bit quieter, uh, we would try and answer some of those questions and take you through what we know. To right, so let's get started. And here we are. You guys will remember this from the video. So this is just the big PND, but I wish our helm was big enough on Indy to fit something like this. This is a 24 inch monitor. Then we would be allowed into the Super Yacht Lounge. Ooh. So we just have to pick that up. No, it looks different if you walk in carrying the gear. I don't think they like that. Anyway, so there is this massive one. There's a 15 and anything in between. So we've been playing with these for the week. It's been great. But the reason we're here is to show you this. So this is where all of the thinking takes place. So everything we've shown you in the previous video and all the Red Seas episodes of us using Zora, it's running inside this small box. Now, this is actually modular. So here we have the brain, the server, the core, whatever you want to call it. This component here is really all you need to get up and running with all we've shown you. Add to that a clip-in from the side module. This one here, this is an SSD. It's memory storage. It's for local backup, storing charts, that kind of thing, all stored here. Remember, Zora has cloud connectivity as well. So anything that's here is also stored up in the cloud. So you've got backup in both places. And then you can add on these slices and I'll explain them in a second. So with this one box on your network, you can have Zora on every device, your phones, your iPads, your laptops, your helm screens, whatever, you name it. To explain the connections, essentially we have two ethernet ports. We have a USB, which is for another form of backup. If you want to store USB hard drives so you can clone the local memory into a storage device. And then below that, we've got this kind of funny looking connector here. And this, the reason it's funny looking is it's kind of the magic. It's the connector that talks every language under the sun. So from here we can connect, and this is for the Boti people among you, NMA0183, NMA2000, CAN bus, Modbus. Uh, it will in fact talk Zigbee, it'll talk Meta, it'll talk talk matter, excuse me, uh, what else? It, it literally talks everything from either this connector here or this connector here. So you can connect all of your instruments on your boat and all your sensors here, and that's you up and running. The whole unit runs on 12 volts. It'll run on everything from, I think, seven volts up to 24, but I will double check that. It's a big range. So you can plug this straight into your batteries and you're up and running. Generally for us, this has been a left on all the time thing. So we leave Zora on because it's doing all that monitoring for us. It'll send us alerts when we're off the boat. So it makes sense to leave the brain awake <laughs> and the whole time, if you like. As I say, the next module is just for memory. This is a, it's a SSD. It's actually an M.2 for the geeks money, but it's solid state memory. We have our NMA connection here, right? So our network connection for our instruments. Now, a lot of people asked about this in the comments. They were saying, that's fine, but I have more than one NMA bus on my boat. Maybe, for example, you've got one that runs all your instruments at the helm and your speed through water and your depth sounder, but another network for everything on the mast so that if you get hit by lightning, you don't want everything getting wiped out. You only want the stuff on the mast getting any potential damage. So you can add this guy and you can have up to three NMA networks all running into Zora all at the same time. Since I mentioned lightning, I've got to explain this. Every single connector you see here is optically isolated, which means there's no electrical connection, no metal connection between the connector you see here and the processing that happens in the background. So I was asking yesterday, the guys at Zora, and they were saying there's a few Zoras out in the field right now that have been testing. Two boats got hit by lightning. 
the only thing that survived was that box. It's amazing. They, they only had this system. The only thing that survived was Zora because it's isolated from all of the potential damage. So that is something that we're certainly thinking about as we continue traveling into the more scary parts of the world. Exciting parts of the world. We might need that. Um, and then lastly, you may have noticed we've got these two other boxes. So this is a 485, so we can do more CAN bus connections, for example. Um, I'm talking geeky language for those who are into it. Uh, so this, again, extends our networking abilities. And then lastly is this one, a mesh module. This one's kind of fun. So this one allows you to do essentially like a Bluetooth mesh network across the boat. So if you've got sensors that you can't get wires to, this guy is how you're gonna set up a mesh network where they almost, the more you add to the stronger the network will get. So it's a really, really cool way to add more sensors without running more wires. I did ask why they have these boxes here and this is really cool. Because we have the ability to control anything, this box here is just one example of digital switching. So we can take lighting, for example. Zora can then control the light switches, which means if we were anchoring, motoring, motor sailing, sailing, etc., we could put our nav lights on here and Zora would be automatically changing them to whatever we're doing. So That's we don't so have cool. to remember, which if you've ever gone to like a, a hall light yard, you'll see masthead lights turning on at, at sunset. And it's because people forgot that they left them on like an automatic mode like we have, or they've uh, turned them on out of habit, who knows. All of that can be controlled from any kind of digital switching on a network, wirelessly or wired, of course. And if you want to have physical switches, of course, they can do that as well. They can stack these units up and add in light switches around the boat that are physically turning on the, the uh, loads. So redundancy, because we need that. And that'll then communicate to these boxes as well. So this is Zora. This is extras. This is all you need. How's that for a whistle-stop tour?